see my video on better bearings, uh, my review for them. If not, I'll pop a little link up here. Today I've got to take them apart, I've got to clean them, and I've got to re-oil them. Aim is to make them work better than this. I bought some of this off the internet, off of eBay. It only cost about a fiver. It's a thin oil, so it should work better than, say, speed cream and that sort of thing. I watched a really good guide on YouTube. So actually, most of this advice is going to be his. Um, I'll pop a little clip on now. What I highly recommend using is citrus cleaner. Citrus cleaners contain orange oil, and orange oil is an organic compound called terpene. So yeah, I'm going to build my own bottle cleaner because they're about 15 quid on the internet. I'm going to buy some cheap cleaner. I'm about to go off the B&M store. Weather's not so nice, but the rain's just stopped. So I think I'm going to jump on a bike and get moving. Check this bike out. I borrowed my dad's. It's in a relatively new giant hardtail. It's so nice. So much suspension on it. Well, at the front at least. This drop at post is so much fun. I can't say I use it properly, but I think it's cool. Fun fact, uh, me riding a bike is where Mr. The Skids in Mr. Skids and Skates and Skids came from. Not skating. It's also got a 1x10 uh, gear set, so that's cool. So there's only 10 gears. I'm a big fan of that. Who needs more than 10 gears? My mountain bike's got 24 gears, and realistically, I only need to use about seven of them. But I will say, this is really low ratio. It's made for off-roading, so once you're on the road, you sort of you do run out of gears on this. It doesn't necessarily have to be the way with a 1x10. Hey, all right, I'm gonna try and go through as many green spaces as I can and end up at the industrial estates to buy some cleaning product. All right, we just stopped off to feed the ducks. I've got some sunflowers for them, some sunflower seeds. They're quite sleepy today. Some little red guys with the red beaks. Oh, there he is. I can't remember what they're called. Water something? More hens? Right. This will do because it's got lemon in it. We've got elbow grease. Didn't realize that was bottled. We've got candle because I fancied it and it smelled nice. I thought it'd be fun to make the bearing thing in a frappuccino, a frappuccino bottle. So I'll see if they fit in that, otherwise, I've got to think again. Come to BQ now. I was hoping they might have some wing nuts, maybe a perfectly sized bolt, but it's looking like that's not the case. Doing one by 10, but they're in M6, so I've got a load of hardware for that for the van, including a bit of all threads, so might even be useful with the van. Quick break to uh, drink my frappe. Oh, sweet. <laughs> all right, here's what we ended up with. We've got this elbow grease, fairly natural degreaser, which should work well to get the grease and contaminants off of the bearings. We've got this glass bottle, Starbucks Frappuccino. The neck fits bearings in and I should be able to fit quite a number of them down vertically. I've got these wing nuts. These wing nuts should make it easy to secure the bearings into the bottle. Found my old bearings in here, so I'll use them to test out the fit before I take all my ones out of the boot. And I've just got to find a pen or something to space out the bearings once they go onto this uh, axle and cut a bit of M6 all thread. Welcome to the garage. In here I've found couple of big washers. I might find some more in this box if I need anything. A few M6 uh, bolts to hold things on the onto the cap and M6 all thread. I'll cut some of that down to size enough to fit into the bottle and on top of the cap. Right, I'll cut this all thread to size and I said I want it to go down to here in the bottle. So I'm going to try and cut it about here. I can always lift it off the top a bit more using nuts. Got this hacksaw but I don't know how uh, long it's been since this blade's been changed so I might have to uh, Get out the uh, get out my Dremel in a sec. Nice. Can't find a shitty pen to take apart, so I'm gonna try and pull this one apart and hope it fits. Well, that'll be all the ink in there. All right, that's annoying. Oh no. Okay, we're all right. This is gonna cut up to make dividers to space the bearings apart, so they can all get a good bit of wash. Right, I managed to find a six millimeter socket. Or oh, the all thread rod should fit perfectly within that. Just gonna get that nicer in the center. Let's see. 
Right, I got a better idea. I think this is called a step a bit. And should open it up gradually. That should be six mil. Nice. Right, here's the plan. Well, not here's the plan. I'm gonna do it. So I got these big washers, they can go on top. I'm gonna put a little hex nut on. No, actually, keep the hex nut on. I will use one of these plastic washers. I think they'll be good. So you know it's like wet. Maybe it won't make a difference. Metal one. Followed by a plastic one. All right, well, I'll need some tightening on afterwards. Cool. Let's put a jam nut on the top as well. Right, it's so this we've got here. We've got a jam nut at the top, another nut below it, plastic washer, and then large metal washer. On the other side, large metal washer followed by a plastic washer and a few uh, nuts just to space it out a little bit. So that's gonna go onto there. Cool, now lock it into place. Now we're gonna make some spaces so that you can have, so you can put bearings all along it with some space between so some cleaners to get in. Just one thing to make sure before we go too much further is that I can screw down the lid. Oh, not quite, I don't think. I've got to make this a little bit shorter by putting the all thread up a little bit. Right, cool. So next thing, I'm gonna cut these up into like little five to 10 millimeter sections to space the uh, bearings apart. Right, that's a load of these ready to go. It turned out to be three wheels in the end that the better bearings went wrong on. Uh, so I've taken all of the bearings out and I'm going to take the shields off, give them a wash, followed by a, a oil. I just gotta take these plastic, these rubber shields off first so those are not gonna get any cleaner in. I've got a paper clip, I push it into the inner red edge of the bearing and it just pops out like that. Because these ones are coloured, I've still gotta look after them, keep them together and all. I've probably gotta give them a clean themselves as well. This bearing's the worst of them all. I've just taken it apart. I can't see what's visibly wrong with it, uh, but I mean, it must just have some grit in, right? I can't see if there's a ball bearing that's smashed or anything. Let's see. That's all of them done, and all the shields over here. Let's get them washed. Right then, let's go. So we're only gonna get eight on at, the at a time, but that's fine. Just means we'll go through two washes. If I was a skateboarder, that'd be all I'd need. Cool. That's how, that seems feels securely in there. I'm gonna take the head off this uh, cleaning stuff. Fill this up some. Well, I was wondering how long that would take. It started coming out the top a little bit, but I don't think that's too much of a concern. I think if I shake it like this, it won't. Not sure how long I'm supposed to be shaking, but I think I'm gonna stop now. Let's get these out. I'm gonna put them onto a paper towel. Right, that's the second batch done. Not sure how this is gonna work, but I need to clean these off, so let's hope they don't just dissolve if I put them in this shit. I'll give them a shake. Right, now to work out to get them out. If I was to do this again, I would put them into a separate jar with the same cleaning fluid. It does seem to work, but it saves you getting your fingers all covered in it, trying to spoon them out of the neck. There we go, I hope that's all of them. to get bearings wet isn't it right those are the bearings wrapped up back to the garage for some oil right we got dry bearings ready for oiling and four guards two bearings each of each color um ready to put back on them so i just need a few drops of these on each side work through them in a logical order right 
I'm gonna flip them over onto the other side. The most of the oil should have got through to this side, but I'm just gonna put a couple of drops on this side um, just to make sure that everything in there's got a nice even coating. They sound pretty good. And these uh, these covers should just pop right on. They do have a side, one's got metal on it, one's got rubber. Well, that recorded faster than I intended it to. Uh, we got all the bearings with their rubber covers back on. A couple of them, still not sounding too hot. It's about three weeks since I recorded those. Well, since I recorded the clips that you've just been watching. And the bearings are still spinning. In the end, I had all my bearings put back together, cleaned, oiled, but they still weren't working properly. So I had to take it way back to the beginning. So I took them all apart, washed them again, dried them off, didn't rinse them with water, no water. Um, yeah, dried them off and I put some oil on. Your bearings are never gonna be the same as they were out of the box, but these are better. Um, so I just gotta see how long they go for. It's only been three weeks since I cleaned them and last time it was a month until I noticed that one of the bearings had messed up. So I was crossing my fingers, hoping it's not gonna be as quick this time. But yeah, they all seem to be going pretty well. Yeah, they're rolling fine. Not as quiet as they were. If you uh, if you watched my review of the better bearings, like my, my only compliment of them other than the colour was how quiet they were. They're really quiet. So yeah, they're not quiet anymore. But if they manage not to grind up again, not to get full of dust and dirt, then they might manage to not get sopped for bones bearings for another few months or something. We'll see. If you're after guides on how to do any of this, uh, I'll put some links in the description below. I've been Mr Skids. Thanks for watching. Let me know what your favourite type of British water bird is.